Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now... With 526 episodes broadcast from 1941 to 1952, we bring to you The Inner Sanctum Mystery. Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup presents Inner Sanctum Mystery, starring Wendy Berry. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is your host, Raymond, inviting you through the squeaking door for a grisly little party. (laughs) Well, now for our weekly news summary of events from the other world. Slash. The galloping ghost defeated the marauding murderers in the opening game of the ectoplasmic baseball league last week. An invisible crowd of 20,000 saw the contest. Slash. The slimy spooks union is considering a strike to charge people for overtime when they scare them during the day. And, uh, oh yes, a fake medium was arrested for saying he could get in touch with humans. Well, that's very funny, Mr. Raymond. Now, that's what I like, when you say amusing things instead of scary ones. Oh, thank you very much. Well, they have a very amusing time in the other world. The other day, they held a masquerade ball and everyone came disguised as people. Well, that's very interesting. Did they serve refreshments? Oh, yes, they served Lipton tea. Everybody loved it. Why, to count all the cups of tea they drank, you'd have to be a teetotaler. (laughs) (laughs) Well, then the other world must be pretty much like this one. Because folks here feel the same way about Lipton tea. Why, more people drink Lipton's than any other brand. And they don't just serve it at mealtimes, either. Yes, sir, Lipton's is an around-the-clock drink. It helps lots of housewives through their work day, and it's a grand beverage to serve your friends when they drop in of an evening. And, of course, there's one big reason why Lipton tea is so popular. It's because of that famous brisk flavor. That word brisk means that Lipton's always tastes tangy and full-bodied. It's never flat or wishy-washy. Yes, folks, you just don't know how good tea can be till you've tried Lipton's. Our friends, while you're trying things... Try on this rope for size. (laughs) Oh, didn't I tell you? We're going to um, hang a very attractive lady tonight. Our story is called The Girl and the Gallows. It all adds up. It's an original radio play by Milton Lewis, and our star is that glamorous motion picture actress, Wendy Berry, who played the role of Karen. All right, friends. On a nice spring evening like this, a few chills running up and down your spine are just what you need. So get yourself a sweet companion, turn the lights down low, put your arm around her. Oh, brother, sit back and get ready to have the wits scared out of you. Let's go. The door was open. And I walked into the strangest apartment I'd ever seen. A sweet, sickening odor overwhelmed me as I looked around. It was a rare incense, burning in a hollow skull that stood on the mantelpiece. I looked closely. The skull was human. I felt someone's eyes on me, staring, watching every move I made. Good evening. You're Karen Marlowe, aren't you? How did you know? I'm Laura Mason. Oh, oh, Father's told me so much about you. I had to come and see you. May I call you Laura? Of course. I thought it'd be best if we met like this by ourselves. When you marry Father, you're going to be my mother. I, I never had a mother. She died when I was born. Yes, Dennis told me. 
I can see now why father's so much in love with you. I can grow to love you, too. What has your father told you about me? That you were quite an extraordinary woman. Can you, can you really foretell the future? Why did you come here? <laughs> I told you. You're going to be my mother. That's and... not the reason. I don't understand. Sit down, Karen. Before you leave here, you will understand. And you'll believe everything your father told you about me. She sat next to me, held my hand. Hers felt like ice. Suddenly her body shook and quivered as though she were being seized by some terrifying unseen demon. Her eyes had little dancing flames. Then they were gone. They became hollow, endless, like two round black holes of infinite space. She was in a trance. Her hand held mine like a vise. There's not going to be any wedding. What are you saying? I see a coffin. A coffin? There's a man in it. Dennis, your father. You don't know what you're saying. On the float of your home, a dagger in his throat, his head in a pool of blood. Stop it! Murdered! Stop it! You struck me. I had to wake you out of that horrible trance. How can you say such awful things? They're true. They can't be. But they are. I still remember the last vision I saw. It should interest you very much. I don't want to hear about it. You were in it. I? How? There was a figure hanging from a gallows. It was you. You hate me, don't you? You want to see me dead. That's why you're telling me this. No. I'm not afraid of you. You're rotten and evil and loathsome. And I hate you. I hate you. I could kill you. What's wrong, sister? Father. Father. You, uh, you Karen Marlowe? Just as she said. The dagger in his throat. Murdered. Oh, father. Don't look at him again. But he's been murdered. I... Yeah, I know it. Here, drink this. But... Shut up and drink it. Thanks. Who are you? Rue Locke. Homicide. The police? Yeah. We got a tip. But how? Someone called in. This is awful. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough on a kid like you. Um... Feel well enough to talk? Yes. Okay. When did you see him last? Tonight. At seven. Here. Then where'd you go? To see a woman named Laura Mason. Laura Mason. Was she home? No. She arrived a minute after I got there. She predicted this. What? She said this would happen when I saw her. Oh, yeah? Uh, did you know what was in your father's will? No. Oh, he never told me. He left all his dough to you and Laura Mason. If either one of you dies, the other gets it. How'd you find out? We get around. At 7.30, your neighbor heard him scream. 7.15, a dark-haired woman in a red coat was brought up here by the elevator boy. She was very attractive. Do you know anyone like that? Yes, Laura Mason. You sure? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, who made that... Uh, head of your father. I was a sculptor in Paris many years ago. Why? As your father mentioned it in his will. How? Well, he said that under no circumstances must it go to you. It was to go to Laura Mason or be destroyed. Well, what made him do a thing like that? I don't know. Father was a strange and brilliant man. She killed him. I know she did. Who? Laura Mason. You know she did it too. Now, take it easy. <laughs> Feel well enough to go out? Yes. Okay. Take me to Laura Mason. Yes? I'm Lou Locke. Homicide. Uh, please? Yeah. Where's Laura Mason? Uh, Laura Mason? Don't play dumb. Oh, I never heard of her. Ever seen this lady before, Miss Morrow? No, and I... 
I've never seen this apartment before either. Did you make a mistake? No. No, this is the building. This is where the apartment is, but I... I don't understand it. Neither do I. I told you how strange it was. Yeah. Hey. The skull on the mantelpiece, I, I don't see it. But it was here. Only a few hours ago. What's your name? Maxine Maynard. How long are you living here? Five years. You must have made a mistake, Miss Morrow. I didn't. I know it sounds crazy, but... You don't believe me, do you? You don't believe a word I told you. Let's go back to your place. The boys must have finished up by now. You'll be okay here tonight, Miss Morrow. Are you leaving? Yeah, I uh, got to get back to headquarters. You still don't believe me? Look, you're a you're a young kid, a nice kid. You never saw a man who was murdered before. It, it can bowl you over. You think I imagined it all? Well, it's happened before. Oh, but you'll be all right now. Good night. But don't go. Please don't go. Well, I've got to. I'm I'm frightened. I I don't want to be here alone. There's a cop in the car. If you want him, call. I I don't want to be in this apartment by myself. I've I've hardly ever been without my father. I don't go. Please. Easy, kid. I'll come back if I can. Was I losing my mind? Did I imagine the strange interview with Laura Mason? I was alone in the apartment where my father was murdered. I was too frightened to think. Suddenly, the door buzzer sounded. I rushed to open it. No one was there. I sat down. Was this something I imagined, too? The phone rang. I picked up the receiver. Hello? 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 No one answered. Was it all imagination? Had something happened to me? I went to the window, opened it. I heard the traffic far down in the street. Jump? Why not? father was dead. My life was a nightmare. I couldn't go on like this. Yes, jump. It'll be all over. The torture, the fear, the madness, all gone. I leaned over the ledge. One move, it'd be all over. I would jump. Come back here. Let me go. Let me go. No, you don't. I don't understand. Never mind what I don't understand. You're just lucky I came back. It'd be better if you hadn't. Something's happened to me. I, I see things that never existed. I hear bells, the phone, the door buzzer. And all the time I feel that woman's eyes on me, watching me. Cut it out. Why didn't you let me jump? I'm no good to anyone this way. Why did you come back? Because I... Come here. Don't. Let go of me. Shut up. You kissed me. Yeah. That's why I came back. You... Let's not talk about it now. Oh, but why? Because you're beautiful. I wanted to do that ever since I saw you. You still want to jump now? No. No. Okay. I'm going to take you to a good doctor. You think there's something the matter with me? Well, let him decide. But I did see that woman, just like I told you. We've been checking. We can't find any trace of a Laura Mason. <gasps> Why'd you jump like that? The door buzzer. You, you did hear it ring, didn't you? That was the door buzzer. Sure, sure, I heard it. Oh, thank heaven someone else heard it. I'll open the door. <gasps> What's the matter, Karen? Oh, it's her. Standing in the doorway. It's Laura Mason. Good evening, Karen. <laughs> nice queer monkey business, huh? See, I wonder what happened to that apartment with the burning skull on the fireplace. Oh, that'd make a cozy little place for a vampire. She could invite her friends up and uh, have a few drinks. Um... <laughs> oh, now, Mr. Raymond, I just can't stand the thought of vampires. Oh, well, tell the truth. I feel the same way, Mary. 
I always say that I could kill a vampire and it wouldn't bother my conscience at all. After all, I wouldn't be spilling her blood. It'd be somebody else's. Now, please, please. There are no such things as vampires. So let's talk about something else. Something sensible. Heaven forbid. Well, then you just be quiet because I'm going to give some sensible advice. I'm going to remind all the folks who drink Lipton tea that it's wise to buy the larger, more economical size packages. Oh, yes, it's thriftier, but that isn't the only reason. I mean, Lipton tea is the perfect drink for so many occasions that unless you keep a good supply on hand, you may be caught short just when you need it, such as when friends pay a surprise visit to your house. So when you buy Lipton tea, the tea with the brisk flavor... Be sure to get it in the larger size packages. Oh, sure, and there's still a large package of murder ahead tonight, so let's get back to our star, Wendy Berry. Hmm. Ah, let's see, where were we? Oh, of course, Karen was trying to make up her mind if she was going bats when suddenly the door opened and in walked Laura Mason. I'm Detective Lou Locke, homicide. Better sit down, Miss Mason. Thank you. Karen, will you please fix me a drink? Yes, but... You've got to tell him what happened this evening. He doesn't believe me. Fix it the drink, Karen. I'll do the talking. All right. I, um, suppose you've been wondering about me, Mr. Locke? Yeah. Did, uh, did you know about his will? I did. I, um, suppose you've gathered quite a bit of evidence against me. We've got enough. Did you kill him? Do you have my drink, Karen? Yes, here. Thank you. No, I didn't kill him, Mr. Locke. We'll let the jury decide then. Would you care to know who did murder him? I have a certain curiosity. She did. Karen? Yes. You, you don't know what you're saying. Why don't you tell him, Karen? Why don't you confess? But I have nothing to confess. I didn't kill my father. Lou, you don't believe her, do you? You know she's lying. I listen to everybody. That's my business. Are you going to confess, Karen? What are you trying to do to me? You know I didn't kill him. You know because you killed him yourself. Miss Mason, I understand you saw the body of Dennis Marlowe in the vision. Yes. The vision came after the murder. After you were known to come to this apartment earlier this evening. She killed him. That's why she could see these things in her vision. What have you got to say to that, Miss Mason? I see I'll have to convince you too, Mr. Lott. You don't believe in these powers of mine? No. You will. Let me hold your hand. She held his hand, just as she held mine. That same strange shudder went through her body. Her eyes again became the round black wells of infinite space. In a moment, you'll be looking at the body of a woman, Mr. Locke. She's lying on the floor of this apartment. She's dead. Yeah. Who is she? I can't see her face yet. Wait. I'm beginning to see it now. It's... <gasps> What's the matter? This drink has been poisoned. What are you talking about? Karen poisoned my drink. The body lying on the floor is me. She's murdered. No, it's a lie. It's some trick. You won't win, Karen. My body will disappear. It's not like yours. Not like any of you. You won't be able to arrest me. What happened to her? What's the matter? Just a minute. She's dead. Dead? Murdered. She's been poisoned. Poisoned? That's right. Look at her eyes. But I didn't do it. You saw me pour the drink. I wasn't watching you. But you can't believe that. I didn't that. say you killed him. But that's what you're thinking. What I'm thinking now isn't worth a button. <sighs> Give me that shawl on the piano. Here. I want to cover it. You don't really believe Listen, that I... you stay here. I'm going into the next room to phone headquarters. I'll be back in a minute. I looked at the shawl covering the twisted heap on the floor. What kind of a woman was she? Why had she lied? Though hypnotized, I walked over to her, picked up the shawl. She was beautiful, even more beautiful in death than in life. Then out of space, just as I'd felt it before, I felt her eyes on me. They were closed, yet I knew she was watching me, staring at me, looking at every move I made. 
Suddenly, I heard myself screaming at her. You can't see me. You're dead. You're dead. You can't see me. I couldn't bear it another moment. I ran out of the room, terrified and hysterical. She's watching me. Lou, Lou, I can feel her. Karen. She's watching me. Karen, get a grip on yourself. Oh, I tell you, I feel her. Eyes. Karen. You must believe me. Please, believe me. Now, look, you'll be okay. I finished my call. I want you to come back inside. Oh, no, I can't. You've got to. Look, if you'll only realize that there's nothing to be afraid of, you'll be all right. Come on. I'll go. I'll go if you tell me you don't believe what she said. I don't believe it for a minute. She put that poison in a drink herself. She knew the game was up, but she just wanted to make trouble for you. The whole thing was an act. Here's the... Lou, look. The shawl's on the floor, but Laura Mason... Laura Mason has disappeared. I was alone. Lou had gone back to headquarters. When he left, I could see she had him under a spell. He, too, was puzzled and confused. Just as before, the door buzzer rang. No one was there. The telephone rang. I picked it up. Hello? No one. I was being beaten. I knew it. You can fight evil when it's human. But what can you do when it's not human? She wanted me to die on the gallows. Somehow I knew I would. She was too powerful for me. How could I stop her? How? Good evening, Karen. I looked up. Saw her. Another hallucination. I said good evening, Karen. What do you want? I want you to confess to the murder of your father. That's what you wanted all along, isn't it? That's how you want me to go to the gallows, isn't it? Yes. Call the police, Karen. Tell them how you murdered him. No. Why suffer any longer? You know you'll do it in the end. No. I have patience. I'll wait. Just let me take something out of my purse. A knife? Yes, Karen. Dennis died by being stabbed in the throat. Perhaps you'd like to know how that feels. You... You wouldn't dare. I'd dare anything, Karen. Don't you come near me. You know you've got to die, Karen. Go away. Go away. No, Karen. I have a weapon, too. In this drawer. Oh, a gun. You think that'll have any effect on me? You tried to poison me once. It didn't work. I'm warning you. Go away. Get out of here. Go. I'll shoot. Put that gun down. No. I'm going to kill you. You see? See, Karen, it had no effect. No effect. Blood. You're bleeding. You are human. You won't disappear again. Not this time. And I won't see you again. Ever. Ever. Karen. I killed her. She wanted to murder me. Look, she still has a knife in her hand. I, I killed her. She, she confessed that she murdered my father. She wanted to murder me, too, so she could have all the money. Is that right? Yes. I had a chance to do some checking up, Karen. We trailed that woman we found in the apartment you took me to. Oh, then I, I wasn't wrong about the apartment. No. We questioned the old lady, and she confessed. The apartment was a trick when she used to hold seances in could be changed, like a stage set. They rigged up wires in this apartment so they could make the buzzer and the phone ring and make you think you were going out of your mind. They, they wanted me to confess to murdering my father. That's right. Oh, it's all over now, Lou. No, it isn't. She uh, wanted you to confess because she knew we'd stacked up a lot of evidence against her. But I asked why she should pick on you. The answer was obvious. Because you killed him. You heard me. You killed him. You waited till she saw your father and left. 
Then you murdered him, slipped out of the house by the servant's entrance. She came back and saw what you had done. You don't believe that. You can't. It's true. But why should I do it? Well, the money you'd inherit is a good enough motive. Then there may have been a... Oh, point. it's nonsense. I've always had all the money I needed. But would you get it after your father married Laura Mason? You know, that piece of sculpture interests me. Why should he say you weren't to get this? Don't you touch it. Why not? You'll break it. No, I won't. <laughs> you broke it. You deliberately broke it. Oh, he's dead now, and that's all I have to remind him of what he looked like. I could kill you for this. I could kill you. Like you killed him because he wanted to marry Laura Mason? Yes, yes, I... That's enough, Karen. That's all I wanted to hear. Oh, Lou. Lou, listen to me. I, I must have been out of my mind when I did it. Father was all I had. I, I couldn't lose him. But now that he's dead, I, I don't feel that way anymore. Is that right, baby? It, it happened when you kissed me. Did it? You can forget what I told you. Everyone will believe she killed him. I have money, lots of money. I could make you very happy. Oh, it's going to break my heart, baby, but you're going to die. You've told me enough to send you to the gallows. Come on, Karen. <laughs> I pleaded temporary insanity. It failed. This is the last night. That noise. The gallows. They're testing it. Laura Mason was a strange woman. All I can think of now is what she told me. It seems so long ago. There was a figure hanging from the gallows. It was you. That kills two of the prettiest girls we've ever had in the inner sanctum. Karen should have pleaded guilty to having killed her father and asked for clemency on the grounds that she was an orphan. What a <laughs> terrible crime that was. Yes, man. She seemed like such a polite young girl, the kind of girl who goes to finishing school and learns how to... Pour tea. Now, see here, Mr. Raymond, you don't have to go to school to learn how to pour tea. No? And as far as enjoying tea is concerned, you only have to know one word. Yeah? Lipton. <sighs> yes, Lipton tea has a special full-bodied taste. It always tastes fresh and tangy and bracing. Never flat or insipid. Tea experts sum it all up by saying that Lipton tea has a brisk flavor. So, folks... Try Lipton's and see what a big difference that brisk flavor makes. A word of advice, naturally. If you wake up in the morning and uh, feel like stretching, and go hang yourself, bud. By the way, this month's Inner Sanctum Mystery novel is The Lucky Stiff by... Craig Rice. Oh, yes, and next week's Inner Sanctum Mystery Story, directed by Hyman Brown and brought to you by Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup. Next week's story will be about a pair of young lovers who don't think two can live as cheaply as one. So they murder a rich old man. Oh, isn't that ducky? I wouldn't be surprised if she sits on his lap in the electric chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, now it's really time to close that there squeaking door until next Tuesday. So, until then, good night. Pleasant dreams. You unfortunate. <laughs> Folks, these busy days, we all want to save time when we prepare meals. And yet we don't want to sacrifice that good homemade taste. Well, that's just the time to serve Lipton's noodle soup. Lipton's is quick and easy to prepare because it comes in an envelope. You just empty the contents into boiling water and in no time at all, soup's on. And Lipton's has a real homemade chickeny flavor. It tastes just like the chicken noodle soup you'd make right in your own kitchen. It's economical, too. Lipton's costs less and makes more than canned soups. 
So don't forget Lipton's Noodle Soup. And don't forget to tune in next Tuesday night for another Inner Sanctum Mystery. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.